Aesop's Fables, Volume 7 The Lion and the Mouse A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and, in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. <coughs> Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me, begged the poor mouse. Please let me go, and, and some day I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him, but he was generous, and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. <coughs> The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You laughed when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. Moral a kindness is never wasted. The Dog, the Rooster, and the Fox A dog and a rooster, who were the best of friends, wished very much to see something of the world. So they decided to leave the farmyard and to set out into the world along the road that led to the woods. The two comrades traveled along in the very best of spirits, and without meeting any adventure to speak of. At nightfall, the rooster, looking for a place to roost, as was his custom, spied nearby a hollow tree that he thought would do very nicely for a night's lodging. The dog could creep inside, and the rooster would fly up on one of the branches. So said, so done, and both slept very comfortably. With the first glimmer of dawn, the rooster awoke. For the moment, he forgot just where he was. He thought he was still in the farmyard, where it had been his duty to arouse the household at daybreak. So, standing on tiptoes, he flapped his wings and crowed lustily. <coughs> but instead of awakening the farmer, he awakened a fox not far off in the wood. The fox immediately had rosy visions of a very delicious breakfast. Hurrying to the tree where the rooster was roosting, he said very politely, a hearty welcome to our woods, honored sir. I cannot tell you how glad I am to see you here. I am quite sure we shall become the closest of friends. I feel highly flattered, kind sir, replied the rooster slyly. If you will please go round to the door of my house at the foot of the tree, my porter will let you in. The hungry but unsuspecting fox went around the tree as he was told, and in a twinkling the dog had seized him. <coughs> Moral. Those who try to deceive may expect to be paid in their own coin. <coughs> the Donkey and His Driver a donkey was being driven along a road leading down the mountainside when he suddenly took it into his silly head to choose his own path. He could see his stall at the foot of the mountain, and to him the quickest way down seemed to be over the edge of the nearest cliff. 
Just as he was about to leap over, his master caught him by the tail and tried to pull him back. But the stubborn donkey would not yield and pulled with all his might. Very well, said his master. Go your own way, you willful beast, and see where it leads you. With that, he let go, and the foolish donkey tumbled head over heels down the mountainside. Uh, uh. Moral: They who will not listen to reason, but stubbornly go their own way against the friendly advice of those who are wiser than they, are on the road to misfortune. <laughs> The Plain Tree. Two travelers, walking in the noonday sun, sought the shade of a wide-spreading tree to rest. As they lay looking up among the pleasant leaves, they saw that it was a plain tree. How useless is the plain! Said one of them. It bears no fruit whatever, and only serves to. Litter the ground with leaves. Ungrateful creatures," said a voice from the plain tree. "You lie here in my cooling shade, and yet you say I am useless. Thus ungratefully do men receive their blessings." Moral: Our best blessings are often the least appreciated. The farmer and the stork. A stork of a very simple and trusting nature had been asked by a party of cranes to visit a field that had been newly planted. But the party ended dismally, with all the birds entangled in the meshes of the farmer's net. The stork begged the farmer to spare him. Please let me go," he pleaded. "I belong to the stork family, who you know are honest and birds of good character. Besides, I did not know the cranes were going to steal." "You may be a very good bird," answered the farmer, "but I caught you with the thieving cranes, and you will have to share the same punishment with them." Moral: You are judged by the company you keep. The travelers and the purse. Two men were traveling in company along the road when one of them picked up a well-filled purse. How lucky I am! He said, "I have found a purse." Judging by its weight, it must be full of gold. Do not say I have found a purse," said his companion. "Say rather, we have found a purse, and how lucky we are! Travelers ought to share alike the fortunes or misfortunes of the road." "No, no," replied the other angrily. "I found it, and I am going to keep it." Just then. They heard a shout of, "Stop, thief!" and looking around, saw a mob of people armed with clubs coming down the road. <laughs> the man who had found the purse fell into a panic. "We are lost if they find the purse on us!" he cried. "No, no," replied the other. You will not say we before, so now stick to your eye. Say, I am lost. Moral: We cannot expect anyone to share our misfortunes unless we are willing to share our good fortune also. Uh -huh.